Welcome to Bite Size Yaps, where we talk out our ass most of the time. And in this episode, we're going to be talking about The Boys, Season 4, Episode 5, which is honestly a great episode. Dare I say, it's probably better than the, than the previous episode, which I'm surprised by. Because as much as I really love Anthony Starr's performance in Episode 4, I feel like there's there's the plot lines in that episode wasn't the strongest compared to in Episode 5, which Episode 5 feels like the most balanced episode of the season so far. It honestly reminds me of the things that I love about the boys, the superhero satire, especially with the beginning of the episode, or what lingers throughout the episodes, which is the, the satire of the MCU and all the slates and everything that they do. And it's so funny to think about. And it's really cool to see like all the planning and all of that kind of going on. And it's interesting to see these those pitches that they did, especially to Ryan, they did a pitch to Ryan for a superhero show and they wanted Ryan to be in it. And it was interesting to see that whole process and interesting to see Ryan actually not want to go through that. And it, it was actually more interesting to see Homelander being a good father. Like what? I've never seen Homelander be a good father like that before. I mean, he has moments, but for the most part, he, he went from, getting daddy issues to giving daddy issues, you know? But in this episode, he was actually quite refreshing. It was interesting to see his whole perspective and his whole mindset shift after episode four. In episode five, it's really fun to see this dynamic shift and it's not Homelander wanting Ryan to do what he wants. He just wants Ryan to do what Ryan wants. And in this case, Ryan wants to feel power and he also wants to feel all that um he wants to feel like he's doing a purpose you know that's the thing that's interesting because i really liked ryan in this episode so i know i mean i know the rest of the episode is great too but let me just get to the small moments because technically homelander didn't have that many moments in this episode yet the moments that he had in this episode were fantastic dude just absolutely has presence which makes the, the little scenes with ryan so interesting and compelling because there's, those are little scenes that you see Homelander interacting with other people, but it's also him empathizing, not empathizing, the dude's a psychopath, but him really, really connecting with his son, which is so touching yet so dangerous, so dangerous because you, do, you don't want this kid to be the, what's it called? You don't want him to be the next Homelander. He is the wild card in this entire show which really makes things so interesting to me because you really have two fronts in this war, basically. It's basically Butcher, the boys, and Homelander. And basically everyone against Homelander at that point, you know? And it's so interesting to see. And I really love Ryan in this episode. Just fantastic. But I truly think the standout of this episode and the MVP of this episode is Carl Urban and Butcher, basically. He stole the show from me. The dude is so damn charismatic. I didn't realize how damn charismatic Carl Urban can be as Butcher, but damn, he is so charismatic. It's not like I didn't like Butcher this season, but I think this episode, he really brightens up a bit, and it's really eerie to see this guy so jolly and so charismatic, yet terrifying. Like, this dude is brutal at times, and it's fun to see that. And that's what makes Butcher so fun, and... It's interesting to see this guy, like, he is a terrible dude, too, but he is the lesser of two evils. But what happens if this guy becomes what he hates? And that's the thing that is so interesting and so um, terrifying about it, Butcher. Because for what it's worth, oh, yeah, also spoilers, there should be a lot. I should put a spoiler warning before all of this. But, yeah, for what it's worth, it seems like Butcher might be set up as the main big bad of the show, you know? As much as Homelander is the main focus and the main villain throughout the show, it seems like Butcher might get his own um, villain arc in the end of like season four or season five. I'm betting season one. Or did, no, season one. Season. F I'm betting season five that he becomes a villain in some way because he technically already is a villain. Like he does already unethical shit just to move his agenda, just to move his own thing and stop for the greater good, just for his agenda. And, I mean, obviously saving Ryan is the one thing to protect the world, but also he just does it because he despises Homelander. That's why. And it's just so interesting to see that, and that's why I love him. 
I love Butcher. He's so awesome. And also, other spoiler alerts. There's a great cameo in this in this episode, and that comes with um, not really a cameo, but it's one called Esposito's Stan Edgar, which Stan Edgar's awesome. I think I never actually truly appreciated how good Stan Edgar was until now. I don't know why, because I mean, throughout season two and three, I thought he was really cool, but I don't ever, you know, I was never like attached. But here, he was. It was interesting to see this guy in a different light, you know. He's not always constantly um, trying to one up Homelander, trying to be stoic against Homelander. He is interacting and being more. Um, he's still more reserved, but definitely a lot more. Uh, I don't know how to describe it. He has a lot more caring, especially to Victoria Newman. Which, oh my God, Victoria Newman's awesome. I don't know why she's just great. She's a fantastic character, and it's just so fun to see her getting the spotlight in this episode too. There's just a lot of great things in this episode. It's just, a f it's, oh my god, I can't talk. It's just a fantastic episode that I don't understand how they actually pulled it off. And it was just so much like they had literal, oh my god, I could talk about Huey's storyline. Oh, that's so far, that's so sad. That is a sad storyline. Man, that hurt. But there's also, you know, what? let's just get to the Huey storyline. Just a fantastic storyline. I love that storyline so much. Um, it was really heartbreaking to see that. It was heart. It was touching to see it first off to see Huey connect with his father again. Like we haven't seen that. We haven't seen the father since episode two or three. Or no, episode in season one. That was the last time we saw Huey's father. Now, spoiler alert! But now Huey's father is dead, and it's that so they did that so well. Like the performances in this episode were fantastic. I think the standouts are Carl Urban. Uh, what's his name? Jack Quaid and um, <laughs> who's the guy who plays um, Huey's dad? Sh Sean Penn. I don't. I, I don't mess that up. Simon Pegg. Simon. How did I say Penn? Simon Pegg. Yeah, Simon Pegg. Pegg. I know. Ashley loves Peggin, but you know, I love Simon Pegg in this episode. I don't know why. The dude was just killing. It. Like for the little moments that he gets throughout the season, it's kind of sad that this is how he gets to go out but i mean for the most part it's good to see that it's really more for Huey's character development and that's why it really helps that simon Pegg got one last hoorah you know he didn't get written out of the show and then he just got forgotten about you know you want you want to give the actor one last hoorah with his character before he goes out and that's the thing i really appreciate about this episode and this storyline is you really give this actor one last time you know one last thing to say goodbye to. And I think that's really great. Yeah, that Huey storyline is so fantastic, you know. I even tolerated his mom. I don't know why. I just don't trust her. And I just don't understand her. I, I understand her, but I just don't... I don't know. not really attached. You know, she's cool. It's whatever. And there's just... I feel like the couple things that kind of nick this episode down is probably the... It's probably Kamiko's storyline that's so, like... Kamiko feels so disconnected from the rest of this season. I don't know what it is. It's just she's here with these characters, but she doesn't feel like she's there. You know, she just feels like she's tacked on because she's been there for the last four seasons or the last three seasons that she has to be here. But it doesn't really feel like she needs to be here. Like her storyline just feels like it's meandering and just don't know where it's going. It doesn't feel that captivating. So it makes us want to know, you know, and I think that's the thing that's kind of a problem. Like with Frenchie's storyline, you see that. He's facing consequences and ramifications for his actions. It is kind of, um, I'm seri I'm seriously curious how it's going to go work out. How is this going to um, lead to his final culmination? Because I bet he's, he's dead. We'll see how he goes out. But I I'm thinking he's gone. I'm not entirely sure. But that's the thing. I don't know how those two storylines will work. I, I, I actually prefer Frenchie's storyline more than Kamiko's, though, sadly. Because even though I love Kamiko. Oh my gosh, she's great. Um, what's it called? Also, the the Gen V cameo just felt so tacked on to me. Like, you know, like, if they just they just were there, you know? Like, it didn't feel like they are substantial. They are just there. And I think it wasn't the best use of those characters. Because I really love Kate from Gen V. Gen V was a great show. I think I highly recommend that show. It honestly has more heart than The Boys, which is surprising because the, boy the Boys has actually a lot of heart too, especially in this episode. But I think the thing with those cameos, it just felt so tacked on. Like Sam was just there, you know? He just didn't feel like his presence wasn't really 
there at all. He just stand. He's literally a st just stood there. Like, okay. I mean, I guess he's there. You know, he doesn't really matter that much. I think the main connections to Gen V is the virus, and that's pretty much it. Other than that, the those two characters just popping in. I'm like, okay, that's great to see them, but I'm also like, yeah, they're not the greatest. I mean, we'll see if they pop up again in episode six or seven or eight. It'd be cool to see them again, but for the most part, I wasn't just it wasn't that great of a cameo. You know, they were cool. Stan Edgar had the better cameo for sure. So yeah, overall, I'm taking this episode. I haven't done a number scale in a while, but I'm thinking I'm gonna do a number scale now. And right now, I'm thinking it'll be a nine out of ten. This episode was a fantastic episode, probably the most balanced of the entire sh season. Yeah, definitely, it's really fantastic. Great performances, great action. I love the demon sheep. Demon sheep is a creative idea. I never thought of that, but damn, awesome. And um, yeah, just fantastic all around. And MVPs are Huey, Ryan, um. I'm surprised. I mean, Homelander, he's always an MVP, but Carl Urban as um, Butcher is always an, is an MVP in here. You know, just fantastic overall. And yeah, 9 out of 10. The Boys, Season 4, Episode 5, it's a 9 out of 10.